Bambini fans and welcome to another episode of Cycling Crap curated by a tosser from Marseille. In today's episode, making the news from around the world, cycling journos get shafted. Normally, one of my least favourite members of society are in no particular order, traffic police, Tyrone's parents and journalists. Essentially, cycling ones, because let's be honest, they are the dregs of the cesspit, but the publication that I'm about to mention going forward has some of the better ones. Anyway, let's check that pen is working. It needs to work well today. Oh, it's gone off the scale. Ha! Ah. Right, remember to hit me up on Patreon and check the website out for some merch. Enough shilling for now. By Hambini, aged five. Now, this PowerPoint is all about the publication Cycling Tips. So they've been going around for, I think, 15 years plus and have just announced a mass bout of layoffs. 12% of their staff, no less. Cycling Tips is owned by the parent company, which is called Outside Inc. This is the Cycling Tips website. They've quite a lot on there and cover all sorts of stuff. Uh, but in the last couple of days, all that's been on there, especially in the forum, is about the mass sackings. Um, James Wang, who uh, has um, an engineering background, he talks a lot, lot about it. I mean, he's actually put a post in there just riding along with the angry Asian set adrift. Um, have a read of that. It's a six minute read and I wish I could be you know, as articulate as that, but he has put a load of stuff in there for you to read. This is a very brief timeline to explain how cycling tips got to where it is now. So in around 2005 to 2007, I'm not actually sure when, a chap from Canada called Wade Wallace moved to Australia and set up the brand from his kitchen table. Uh, I lifted that from the Cycling Tips website. So um, a few years later, I think it was around 2013, um, Pink Bike, which is another sort of media brand, I think they're based in Canada, um, acquired Cycling Tips. So the two of these got together. At this point, I still think they were a fairly small company, a modestly sized company, and I think that was around 2013. In June 21, Outside Inc, which given they are Inc, uh, is probably a much larger company, bought Pink Bike. And by buying that, they got cycling tips as well. This news is pretty much everywhere, and I just went to the first Google link. Basically, some very high profile cycling journalists have been binned, and it's probably a sign of wider things to come. So, Kaylee Fretz. Dave Rome and a few others who are well known uh, were shown the door. Now business in America is fairly cutthroat. Uh, hiring and firing are a lot more prevalent than in other areas of the world. I'd say the other extreme was probably France where employees have much more power than even the fucking President Macron. You know, if they get fired or you know, something untoward happens, They'll be donning their yellow vests, putting tires around various animals' heads and burning them in the street. You know, you get the idea. In any case, it doesn't sound like Kaylee or uh, the others were binned for being incompetent. I think this has been on the cards for some time. Um, these businesses have long been driven by advertising revenue and the global downturn and drop in demand for mid-market bikes has caused companies to pull their budgets for marketing. Marketing is an easy budget to bin because it's not essential. It's not like paying taxes, rent, electricity, ETC. Um, I mean, this post from James Huang, who I've already mentioned, I have a lot of respect for him. He's got a sound engineering head on. Point two is very telling. He says his management have been pushing paid memberships for some time and that is critical to their financial stability. Uh, this is something that was I, I was told when I was at Eurobike earlier this year. I mean, essentially the media have seen a severe drop in re revenue. To fill a hole, they're using paid memberships or paywalls. 
The problem is that the average consumer did does not really want to pay three dollars for the privilege of a rehash of the um, press release. Now I'm not saying cycling tips were doing that um, but that's the perception of the wider public as a whole. Now it would appear that the hole in the finances is now big enough that the paid memberships are not keeping ahead with the advertising revenue drop and something has to give. In this case, they let some of the staff go. Now, James did say in his Just Riding Along post that advertising revenue was still the biggest source of revenue for cycling tips, but I think he probably knows that it's on its way down and their paid memberships can't keep up. This is the wider market. I mean, this problem is not just associated with cycling tips. If you've noticed, GCN have been pushing GCN Plus for some time. Um, I mean, that's a bit different because it's predominantly a video format, but you'd be blind if you hadn't noticed. Road CC is another one. Um, they have loads of adverts, um, affiliate links, and paid memberships on their site. But even in recent times, they were bold enough to mildly smolder Shimano for their cranks falling apart. Something they probably wouldn't have done a few years ago. And I think they probably lack the technical depth to progress going forward. They'll just be still writing about crap going into the, the sunset. What is the future? Well, this is my opinion on it. I mean, I could be wrong. You could argue over it. I mean, I think the days of the mainstream media are certainly changing rapidly. The final destination is unknown. But I mean, in recent times, you can already see the growth of the one man YouTuber. Low overheads, low fixed costs. And um, there's some examples there. I mean, as an example, if you take Cam Nichols, he went over to Switzerland um, to BMC head headquarters, or courtesy of BMC. That would have been a business decision made by BMC, but I have little doubt that they would have made it on the bang for the buck analogy and embracing these kind of new style, the new style medias, the Francis Cade, the Katie Cookerborough, and you know, these ones here. The reason I didn't put the Francis Cades of the world in there is they're not overly technical, whereas you know, DC Rainmaker, Shane Miller, are the extremes of technical. Um, and you might be asking, well, what about me? Well, I'm in the unfortunate position where the mainstream brands don't really want to send me stuff because I might ream the fuck out of them. So my model is slightly different. The, you know, the revenue that I get from YouTube and my Patreon is used to buy frames and gear, which I then review. It's not quite self-fulfilling yet. I'd hoped it would be, but it's not quite there yet. I also need to pay my large legal expenses when twats like Lucid IP SLU, also known as Absolute Black, registered in Andorra, try to sue me. Oh, and you can view those videos online, by the way. They are all live. The uh, restrictions have all been removed. And then finally, you know, questions come. Are you going to bin off the CT subscription? Cycling tip subscription, it's a few dollars a month. And, um, and what about all of those wheels that hold their speed really well and frames that have lots of compliance, i.e., you know, the, the 80s hi-fi magazine with its patina of sound, all that kind of bullshit. What's your opinion on that? You know, I'd be interested to know. Whack them in the box below. And if you are James Wang or Kaylee or whoever and you want to put a comment down below, I will highlight it for, for everyone to see. That's it, and that's the end of the video. Remember to smash the like button, and as always, keep banging your hairdresser.